The checkered flag has flown on the first round of the NASCAR playoffs, where after three races, the championship hopes of four playoff drivers have been extinguished. Front Road Motorsports' Michael McDowell, 2023 Daytona 500 champion Ricky Stenhouse, Kevin Harvick in his final cup season, and the reigning champion Joey Logano have all been eliminated from title contention, leaving 12 to fight it out for the Bill France Cup. The round of 12 has seemingly become the witching hour of the NASCAR season. Three wildly different tracks seem to create a mix of chaos, desperation, and wild finishes where it seems like almost anything can and most likely will happen, and is certainly shaping up to be the same way this season. Hello and welcome back to Penn State Sports Night. I'm Jack Raczynski alongside Hannah Valcourt and Cord Rodriguez. And guys, I think we should get right into it. There's been so many storylines for the round of 16. What stood out to you the most? Let's start with Hannah. So for me, what stood out the most was one of the most obvious was Joey Logano getting knocked out and eliminated in the first round. A lot of factors added into that, his pace of speed in the past few rounds, and also the wreck that happened on lap 263 Saturday night, which ultimately killed his playoff hopes. Cora, what do you have? You know, Demi Hamlin was a very, very impressive and very strong driver during this first round of 16. He beat uh, Christopher Bell, which won the stages one and two, and he beat Kyle Larson. And I just believe that even though it was heavy downpours during this race and all the setbacks that he's done from last year, he's just going to be a very start out driver for this year. I think I go with Chris Buescher uh, and the revitalization of RFK Racing. You know, three wins on the season, two top fives in the round of 16 alone. I think Chris Buescher has a shot to be a dark horse Final Four contender with that pony going right out of the gate pretty strong. So now let's get into our predictions for the round of 12. Now that we've put it in the past, in the rear view mirror, let's focus on the future to that round of 12. Three tracks of very different designs await. And first up is the mile and a half intermediate of Texas Motor Speedway. With temperature projected to be in the mid 90s and many tire failures last season, Hannah, who do you think will take it in Fort Worth? I'm gonna go with the most obvious pick and that is Tyler Reddick. He's comfortable with the Texas track. He's done phenomenal in all of these races and there's nothing that's gonna stop him this race. Laura? I do agree with you, Hannah. He was Texas last year's winner and he has something to prove this time. He was eighth in standings this year, and if he wins this race, he will succeed and go up in the ranks. Yeah, I think even going back to the race in 2020, where he finished second to Austin Dillon, that really put him on the map as a cup driver. So I'm gonna go three for three, Tyler Reddick takes it to Texas. So the next race is Talladega Super Speedway, which is a drafting track, and unpredictability really is the name of the game. And Cora, you might have a better shot of picking the winning lottery numbers, but who do you got? Honestly, my odds are really great with Demi Hamlin. He is on a mission this year. He was second in Kansas, first in Bristol. And honestly, his drive and determination is what's going to get him through. He already won the pole award earlier this year in Talladega. He already is second uh, previous in this race. And honestly, that's what's going to get him through this. And what's your pick? You might be surprised by this pick, but I'm going with Bubba Wallace. And that is because in his first playoff races, he won Kansas last year. He's only improved phenomenally since then. And I think he has a really good shot of winning this race. I was talking about RFK racing earlier, but I'm going to go with the other guy, Brad Keselowski. He's been really good on the Super Speedways this year. Honestly, should have won Atlanta if not for a rain delay. This actually is the site of his last win in 2021. And let's go back to 2014 where in a playoff cutoff race at Talladega, he was in a must-win situation, and he went out and won. So I'm going with Brad Kay for Talladega. And the final race is the very technical Charlotte Roval, where there is nowhere to hide. So with the final race and a lot on the line, Hannah, who do you got? I'm going to go with a man that got knocked out in the first round last year, and that is Kyle Busch. He is back, he's prepared, and he's going to win it this year. Laura? Honestly... Kyle Larson's going to take it. And his redemption from last year, he was 35 in this race, and he got eliminated in this race. And honestly, I think it's going to be a true redemption story. And honestly, he's the top competitors of this year. And last year, he blamed himself and said it was all his fault of why he lost, and I think that's going to motivate him to win. Yeah, I think I also got to agree with you and go with Kyle Larson. He won this race back in 2021, 
He's been great on the road course and the short tracks this year. He's also good with restarts. And the problem with Charlotte Roval is that the restarts can get very chaotic. If he can avoid that and stay out of trouble, I think he's got a great shot to win. And we hope you'll all tune in to watch the action. And that's all the time we have for tonight and for Penn State Sports Night alongside Hannah Valcourt and Cora Rodriguez. I'm Jack Rachinsky, and we will see you around. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning into this edition of Penn State Sports Night. For more content like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, give us a like, and follow our socials down below. And as always, we are Penn State Sports Night.